Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Motivation, the show where we dive headfirst into the most amazing minds. My guest today has inked her inspiration into the most wonderful books. We've seen her posts all over Instagram and it has inspired us to become better individuals. And I'm definitely speaking for myself here and I know you feeling it as well. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Sister Nadira Chipa. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Nadira? Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah for having me on your show. It's such a pleasure to be here in Johannesburg. <laughs> Thank you for coming here. I mean, we've been talking about this for a while and it's finally happened. Yes. So it's such an inspiration to actually be here with you. Jazakallah. And I'm coming all the way from Durban today. So alhamdulillah for this. Alhamdulillah. Allah has just blessed us to be able to put this out there. And our viewers will be so inspired after you can tell them that brilliant mind of yours. We were speaking just before the show. Um, I want to dive into it. I don't want to waste any time. We were talking about narcissism. Correct. A topic that has been thrown around from pillar to pl post on social media. Mm -hmm. And it's made us think to ourselves, is my partner a narcissist? Are the people I'm around, are my family narcissists? Is everybody around me a narcissist? But it, we fail to ask the most important question. Am I 100%. a narcissist? Is it something that we can identify in ourselves? And let's get into narcissism and what it actually is. Yes. Okay. So what is narcissism? You know, we, it's such a, a word that is thrown around so commonly today. It's like everyone is labeling each other as narcissist. You know, I'm divorced because my husband is narcissist or my parents are narcissist or I'm not speaking, you know, to them. There's family ties that are being broken because of this term. And normally, you know, when you think about it, we all have narcissistic traits in us. Every single one of us, we have traits that we are not proud of, that we perhaps are toxic to other people, but we don't realize this. So how difficult is it for us to say, let's reflect, let's introspect, let's find traits within us that we can heal our heart, mind and soul from going forward instead of projecting that spotlight onto someone else and saying, well, you are in control of my emotions. It's a victim mentality when 100%. you're projecting it onto someone else instead of trying to fix yourself. 100%. It's because you are bleeding. It's right. you are bleeding, your wounds are bleeding. Instead of actually healing that by, you know, going into that wound and finding out the catalyst of why you are bleeding, you're putting on a band-aid and blaming someone else for getting hurt. No, and I mean, this is something that we're seeing everywhere, whether it's a male or a female doing 100%. it. Everybody is throwing it onto everyone else, but no one's standing in front of the mirror saying to themselves, listen, I need to change myself. I mean, exactly. I went to my psychologist not too long ago and what he spoke about was so brilliant. He told me that, Anorexia mm. is a disorder. Correct. And you can physically see that disorder when mm. a person's body is shrinking away and they're withering mm. away. And you can see how this disorder is affecting them. But we all have anorexic traits yes. within us because Correct. we all want to lose weight. We're all so body conscious. Yes. We're all focused. Doesn't necessarily make it a disorder. Is narcissism the same? Is it Correct. where we have traits and, but triggers. Not and triggers, triggers and not necessarily a disorder? Correct. And, and we all have triggers within us because when we are born and when we're born into um, a home where we, a home of love, when we're born into a home of love, you find that both parents are stable, they're safe. So, what do children need more? They need safety, unconditional love, safety in emotions within their parents' emotions, okay. unconditional love and acceptance for who they are. So when that is received, they, they flourish, yes. right? And if that is not received, what happens? The opposite happens. Okay. They start becoming self-absorbed. They start trying to and forcing others to give that to them. So I'm not in control of my emotions. Okay. Someone else is in control of my emotions. And what do we think of ourselves? Who are we? Honestly, when we look at ourselves in the mirror, what do you say? Who are you? It's not what we think we are. We think we are what others' perception of us is. Yes. So I know it takes some time to digest, but it's, if someone tells you that you are brilliant, you have a brilliant mind, so you absorb that subconsciously, thinking that that's who I am, I'm brilliant. But what if someone tells you that you're too emotional, you're too sensitive, you, you know, you're someone that's too difficult? What you start putting then? these masks up in front of you. A hundred percent. Yes. You start internalizing that and that becomes your identity, yet that is not who you are. Uh, okay, because you actually forget who you are because your masks 100%. are blocking you from actually seeing yourself. That makes so much of sense. I want to know, narcissism, is it a male trait? Is it a female trait? <laughs> can it be anyone? <laughs> it's a human trait, okay, right? Okay, okay. It's a human trait. And it can exist in both males and females. So it's not, you know, a, a lot of a lot of females have this idea that it's a male trait, that a narcissist is male, equals male. Right. That's not true. Okay. It's females as well. 
what we need to do is instead of shining that spotlight onto the males, we need to bring it back onto us and find out how are we, how are we toxic to other people instead of saying, how is he toxic to me? Okay. I mean, we attract what we are. So if we yes. are a toxic individual, we're only going to attract toxic people. And if someone is toxic to you, to you. it truly Correct. means that you have a toxic trait within yourself that, you recognize. that needs to be fixed. Also, exactly. And once that's fixed and recognized, like you said, so you recognize it and then you fix it. And once that's fixed, who knows that the partner with you might also start 100%, changing. percent because then your communication changes. Listen, it's so difficult to change uh, yourself. And you cannot fix It's so people. difficult Correct. to change 100%. yourself. It's, it's almost a lifelong journey to change exactly. yourself. And what makes you think you can change someone and else? And we cannot rescue people. No. Yeah. We cannot, you know, a lot of us feel like we rescuers. We want to rescue people. And that's why we attract people that are unhealed. Okay. Because we want to rescue them. Why though? It's because we've been rescuing people all of our, all of our lives. So you have this child that's a rescuer to their parent. Okay. What happens? That mindset carries out. And we attract partners that we, you know, with qualities that we didn't get as kids. Right. So for example, if your parents didn't give you that unconditional love or that attention that you seek, you're going to look for someone to fill that void. And it's never going to. And he's never going to, or she is never going to. Why? It's because you need to become, you know, an entire person before you actually add on that sprinkles to your life. So marriage is like a decoration. Yes. Like you understand your oh, yeah. scoop has to be filled up with that one ice cream scoop. And then you add the sprinkles on yes, top. Yes. So you can't go in with an empty cone. Oh, no, exactly that. Now, I mean, I read that there are two types of narcissism. Yes. And I mean, you're the expert in the narcissistic field. Tell me, top down narcissism, bottom up narcissism, the difference between the two and that we that the viewers out there can recognize if there are those narcissistic traits within themselves. Correct. And it's so important that you say within ourselves, right? Because, yeah, no, well, we only talking about um, healing ourselves. When we say introspection, that's what it's saying, healing ourselves. So when you say a narcissist, most people don't understand what, what, what is a narcissist. Mm. Someone that's so self-absorbed in their own world that they don't recognize that they're hurting someone else. Someone that's bleeding from emotional wounds so much that they bleed on those that did not hurt them. Mm. So when you talk about that, what do I mean by bleeding? It's anger outbursts. It's control issues. It's trying to, you know, control the emotions of someone else. Also the actions of someone else. The abuse, the emotional, psychological abuse that a narcissist will now, you know, um, impose on a person. It's like a spider capturing, you know, that insect into its web and suffocating that person to a point where they make their victims feel as if they are the problem. Ah, okay, okay. And then when it comes from the, the, the top down, that is the controlling nature? That is the controlling, that's where the control comes in. And you know, also there's another aspect, that the bottom up, is when you project to your partner or to not even to your kids as well, that there's such failures in life, that mm. you're not good enough. You're not a good enough husband, you're not a good enough wife, you're not a good enough child. Imagine growing up in a home where you constantly reminded you are not good, in, good enough. So you uh, uh, embrace that, embrace that mindset as I am not good enough throughout your life. And that becomes your internal dialogue. You know, such a brilliant story and a lesson for parents out there. Thomas Correct. Edison, I don't know if you know the Thomas Edison story, yes. where he comes home with a letter from school and his mom reads it and she says, um, it says that you are too intelligent to be in the school mm. and you are too bright and that you should seek something better than the school. The school is not mm. good enough for you. Puts the letter away. Thomas Edison becomes the, the best inventor 100%. of all time, of all time. Many years later, his mom uh, mm. passes on and he searches through her door, drawers and that and he pulls out this letter and he reads this letter. Do you see? And the he said the letter says, the letter says to our viewers out there, that Thomas Edison is mentally retarded. Mm. He does not belong in a school. He belongs in a school for special needs. And he pulls out his diary and he writes in his mm. diary that Thomas Edison is the man he is because he had a mother 100%. who believed in him. You know, this is so crucial. Is the is our relationship with our moms. Yeah. How important is that? And, and our parents on the whole. I mean, exactly. I think that the words that a parent says is so, we it sits in our that. subconscious. That becomes our thoughts, right? Exactly. It and becomes it, our thoughts. Our autopilot. So our autopilot yes. goes into the words that our parents say. we internalize say. that as our own. <laughs> Wow, um, this flew by. I hope you understanding what narcissist, what narcissistic traits are and what narcissism on the whole is. And I know parents, you are taking lessons from this. Children, you are taking lessons from this. Wives, husbands, all of us, we can learn to better ourselves. We'll catch you after the break. 
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. I hope you've absorbed everything and everyone is a little bit calmer now because that was a lot to take in. Sister Nadira, okay. we're really getting into narcissism Correct. and that. But now let's talk about dealing with it. Correct. Let's talk about how do you look in that mirror and say to yourself, listen, I've got this trait that has a bit of a controlling nature. I want to know where you are, what you're doing, mm. what time you're doing it, and you have to report to me all this time. Okay, it's a trait. Now I've recognized mm. this in myself. How do I change this thought process? Okay, so it works both ways. So it could be a trait that you have or your partner has or again your parents or your children perhaps have these traits. And and that controlling, you know, the question is, is very controlling. Where are you? Yeah. What time will you be back home? You know, um, I need I need updates. Um, it's like puppets with a string. So the narcissist is there and, and the puppeteer and he or she is controlling these puppets. And without that control, it leaves them powerless. Okay. So what can we do to recognize this within ourselves or in the individual that we perhaps married to or we were born into, the home we were born into, our siblings perhaps, even in family dynamics, could be your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your sister-in-law, you know. That, work those, colleagues as Work well. colleagues yeah. as well, 100%. Yeah. And, you know, um, we talk about marriage in, in that terms is because you live with the person for decades and yet you're struggling inside. You're suffocating inside. Why? It's because you don't realize that this person is controlling you like a puppeteer controls his puppets. But do people realize that they're controlling as well? Do they realize that they're being the puppeteer? Or is it so subconscious and do they need to tell themselves, listen, you need to back off a bit because this is turning into an actual disorder more than just 100%. a trait. 100%. And that's when they need to seek professional help. That's where that comes in. That spotlight I was talking about, it's always on someone else and not yourself. When you shine that spotlight within yourself, you would see how much you are hurting as a narcissist. There's so much hurt that this person is not, um, you know, doing this from a point of being malicious okay. with the intention. Remember that. They are sick individuals. Just like if someone has a flu, you're going to go to the doctor. You're going to get a shot, correct? But what happens here? No attention is paid to that. You know, I wish men, and this is, I've been, every 100%. single show I talk about this, I wish men can understand the power of vulnerability. Yes. Just taking yes. responsibility for who you are as an individual, seeking the help. Correct. We love our cars. We take our cars for services Correct. before they break down. What about our minds? This is 100%. controlling everything. You you fix the mind, you fix the heart, your actions follow. Exactly, and your life changes. Completely. You become more positive in life. You you see that your, your spouse has changed. Your kid's attitude towards you change. And how precious is this life that it's so temporary. We don't, you know, we need to start again and again checking up on ourselves here. Yes. Men and women, both. Everyone. Like you said, it's a human trait. 100%. It's not just male or female. Or female. female. Yes. Right. So the traits you're looking for, you know, how do we recognize that in ourselves? Firstly, yes. is starting to spend time with yourself alone. Nobody wants to be in miserable company. So when you say to someone, spend 10 minutes, minutes like alone, what do they say? No, but I need my cell phone. You're scared of your own company. So I need the TV. You're scared of your own company. Why? Honestly. It's because you don't want to be in miserable company. Of course. Nobody does. Yeah, of course. You don't, even if it's your own company that's miserable. And that should be the first sign to say, exactly. hey, wait a minute, if I can't be alone with myself, then how is anyone going to want and to be with me? So you need to introspect, be alone with yourself. Also, witness the emotions you're going through, through the day. We live on autopilot, so we switched on. All the time. Yes. We're on autopilot. But we go through this every day. It's like routine. So our emotions are on routine as well. Why are we not checking up on ourselves? Okay. So we need to check where are we at? Where's our mindset at also? And then tell me, do these narcissistic traits then lead to very toxic behaviors? 100%. In relationships or just in, in, as a person in general, do Correct. they become a toxic individual mm. to those around them, and seeking they, attention in yes. any possible way? And self-destruct. Wow. Well, Correct? Because you see, um, uh, with narcissism, now it, we become self-entitled. So like we feel that we, sh we deserve this. This is what we need, but we deserve it. It's, it's ours, even people. So we're forgetting that people don't belong to us. They belong to Allah. Allah gifted us that time with them. What do we need to do? We need to introspect and say, I appreciate you as a person. And when you're talking about, you know, having these traits within us, self-destruct, to self-destruct, we get to a point where if you do not seek medical attention, what's going to happen? You break down. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And we've, you're going to break down and you're going to break those around you. That's just it. And you need to recognize this exactly. trait. And I think as human beings, men, women, who, children, even who are watching this, young adults, young adults, teenagers, let's start fixing ourselves up right now 
Because if we become the best versions of ourselves, Correct. we attract the best versions of other people. And moment, let me ask you, okay? Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What do you think and why do you think people become this way? I think it's seeking validation, a void that they didn't receive at some point in their life. And when they do receive it, the way to equate it is a fly. Mm. A fly can get nourished when okay. it eats good food or a fly can get nourished if it eats rotten food. 100%. Either way, it gets nourished. And when you're seeking attention and you get attention, whether it's good or it's negative, you get nourished by it. So yes. if you're getting good attention, a narcissist will be just as nourished or a toxic yes. person will be just as nourished. And if they get bad attention, they will be just as nourished. So what it will do is the good attention, they crave it, they want it, they take it. Yes. But the minute there's no good attention coming, they look for the negative attention. And when that negative attention comes, they want to trigger you. And Correct. as soon as they trigger you and you give them the attention that they want, I think the worst word to tell a narcissist mm. that will completely shut everything off is whatever. Correct. Because you, you You're not feeding yourself you. Correct. from that unnecessary attention that Correct. you want to give them. And, and they're seeking drama. That's it. They're seeking the conflict. They're seeking drama. So they want you to react. So when you don't react from a place of emotion, but rather respond from a place of intellect, what happens? They switch off. Yeah, completely. Because they're not, they're not controlling your emotions anymore. You're using your intellect as opposed to your emotion. They know how to trigger you. So they will know exactly which is your trigger points and press those buttons. And I mean, our religion is so beautiful where Correct. it says, when, when you're feeling worked up, go and make wudu. Exactly. Cool yourself down. Take a moment away. And it's basics, right? And then come back because I always believe that the minute your heart rate goes up, keep quiet. Correct. The minute your heart rate goes up, it's best for you to just keep quiet because the minute you start speaking from emotion, your yes. intellectual side just disappears. And, and shaitan comes in and takes shaitan over the whole conversation. In. So go and make wudu, wash your face, freshen up. And if you're still feeling, go and read Tura Salah. Connect yourself with Allah because that's where the soul finds its most and peace. peace. Correct. And when it's at peace, everything calms down. And from a scientific point of view, uh, the parasympathetic nervous system yes. then kicks in. So it kind of calms everything. It gives you a state, uh, state of homeostasis. And we're not in survival and mode anymore. Not at so all. We're not fight or flight is, Correct. is gone. And we're not feeling attacked all the time. So a narcissist normally feels attacked all the time. They're in hypervigilant mode. Oh. So they feel like there's robbers coming in to attack them at all times. But they, they are safe. They just do not feel safe in their own bodies. So it, feels, it seems like narcissism is, is the umbrella. And Correct. under that, you got toxic behavior, you got gaslighting, you got emotional blackmail, manipulation. You got all of these things under this one thing. So what we need to look at is, if you look at all the traits under narcissistic behavior, we each have one, Correct. at least one of those Correct. within us, and fix it. And that is our, our duty as a human being, 100%. is to fix it. I always believe that the sixth pillar of Islam is to just be <laughs> a good human being. Exactly, and, and to be a kind to the people you be, that you love the most. Exactly, and how do you be a good human being if you don't fix yourself? And it's your family that knows you the best because they live with you. Yes. I mean, you could put on an appearance for other people and show the entire world that you're kind and you're loving and you're passionate and you never see narcissists written on someone's forehead. You Actually, they come across as the most um, the energetic, energetic and the most loving people around. Correct. Yeah. And then you'd be surprised to learn, you know, going forward that they also have issues that they were struggling with. Because everyone doesn't show us their challenges for the day. No one has a signboard saying, "This I'm going through depression. But how do we help others and without rescuing them? I think the, the ability to allow your partner to be vulnerable yes. is so important to understand your partner completely. Because if you were female growing up in a home where your dad told your brother that be a man, be a man, be a man, Correct. you think to yourself that if your husband comes to you with a problem, you're going to say, be a man, be and a be man, strong. be and a man. And, and boys don't cry. And boys who were told that feel that this is the only way to be recognized as, as a man. Correct. But we need to be able to find this peace within our partner yes. or within someone, especially as men, because we don't have support structures, Correct. just to find someone to lean on, a pillar to say, I need your help. And communication I'm going through comes a tough in, time. Right? I'm really going, and comprehension even more than communication. And you know, 100% where you say that, comprehension and communication together, how often was this, was, uh, you know, these traits seen generations ago? There was no communication yes. between a father and his son to that extent that you're able to take an, a challenge and go to your dad and cry and say, this is what I'm going through. Yes. My heart is broken. Help me. And I think today's children in the world that they're living in with the amount of information that's yes. flooded onto them, they need this emotional help. They do, and we need to, as parents, be alert yes. as to what they're going through. So there's subtle signs. Yeah, and, uh, 
you know, a to say this is a father's I'm words. A father's words are it's so, so important. Subconscious, you know, it sits in a child's head. Ah, but we are nearing the end of the show, and I want to ask you the final question. The Please. question I ask all my guests: hypothetical question. It's your final day on earth. Allah give you a long life, inshallah. Amen. And many, many, many years from now, I'm going to take written... a flight back to Durban, right? <laughs> yes, inshallah. Many, many years from now, you've written all the books you want to write, and you've inshallah, helped amen. as many people as you want to amen. help. But you can leave the world with three pieces of advice. Mm. What would those three pieces of advice be? First piece of advice would be, think about death often. That brings life into perspective, Mom. It puts your entire life into perspective just by thinking about death often. Why? It's because we understand that this world is so temporary that every breath is precious. Okay. Also, live with intention. Live with it. Make intention to live with joy. So you're waking up in the morning. Make that intention that today, even though the day may not be good, I'm going to find one thing to be joyful about. Right. Even though, even even if it may just be sipping a glass of water, I'm going to find find joy in that. Wow. And number three, smile. Smile and live wholeheartedly in every moment that you are alive. It's your precious gift from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's telling you, you know what? This is your place, this is where you are. Be mindful of where you are and enjoy that moment to its fullest. You're actually giving me goosebumps. This was such an inspirational exactly. interview. And I'm so glad that you were inspired to ink it down. Jeez, and I want our viewers me. out there, we're going to be giving away uh, Nadira's books as well. So if you follow us on social media, we've got the three books here, Your Journey, Soothe Your Soul, and of course, the newest one, ink of inspiration that we are going to be giving away. These books are phenomenal. I know you've enjoyed this interview as much as I've enjoyed doing it. I've learned so much. And if there's one thing we can take from Nadira is don't take your knowledge to the grave with you. 100%. Put it down, share it with the world yes. and let the world see what an inspiration you are. And I'm going to end off with my line. You are amazing just the way you are. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, I normally end off with this is motivation and let me motivate you. But one more time, Nadira. You are amazing just the way you are. Oh, I love it. Assalamu alaikum and see you next week.